trying to stay around to the end of the program because Max is going to wrap things up for us today. And I know I'm looking forward to that. Uh, as Walt mentioned, uh, a big part of the strategy or the opportunity here around getting more minorities involved in the construction trades is working with the Pittsburgh uh, Public Schools uh, and uh, to try to make that happen. And so here from the Office of the Superintendent of the Pittsburgh Public Schools are Angela Mike, the Executive Director of Career and Technical Education, and Dara Ware Allen, Assistant Superintendent uh, with the uh, with support so with support services with the district. I think I botched that, but at any rate, come on Good morning, everyone. I'm Angela Mike, and as was said, I am the Executive Director of Career and Technical Education for Pittsburgh Public Schools. Um, the goal of Career and Technical Education is to prepare our students for career pathways into the global market. Uh, we want to make sure our students are prepared to take advantage of the inflection report that was put about the, out by the Chamber. Allegheny Chamber said there's going to be over 80,000 jobs possibly without folks to fill them. That's something to think about. Well, we have a direct connection to those students early, and our goal is to make sure that they're going to be able to take advantage of those job openings. We want to help to create the pipeline. Well, how are we doing that in career and technical education? We have over 15 programs. Used to be called vocational education. <laughs> But we want to get away from that. We are the new career and technical education. And I was so happy to hear um, when Jeff was up here and he said, these are highly skilled jobs. That was the best thing I heard all week. Because it's known, or, or was known, that the perception was, oh, put the kids in those jobs who just want to use their. <laughs> That's not the case. They're using their brains and their hands. Two things. So they're highly skilled. Um, the jobs are high wage, and they're in high demand. Um, these 15 programs that we have, I'll just name a couple. We have carpentry. We have HVAC. We have health careers. We also have a coding program, an IT program, entertainment technology and emergency response technology at Westinghouse High School, which was new this year, we just opened. Um, we were able to do that with a partnership with the city of Pittsburgh. Um, if you haven't seen any of our programs or you don't know we exist, because some people think that, think that vocational or the new career in tech went away in Pittsburgh public schools. However, it didn't. It's alive and well. Please go on our website. We have a virtual tour that will take you inside of every lab in our building. And then you will be able to see that we have very, very high tech equipment um, in those programs. And our students are preparing for the workforce. I have to say that partnerships are key. Without the community, without industry and business, we won't survive. We have to be directly connected to industry and business. Our partners help us to make sure that we are current. We are making sure the students are coming out with the credentials that they need to move into jobs and post-secondary education. Um, also, our partners provide internships, job shadowing opportunities. It gets the students on the job site to see what opportunities are available. So as I said before, please keep in mind it's rigorous. Students in Pittsburgh Public Schools in grades 10 through 12 make a serious commitment to be in these programs. Three years, three periods a day. They do leave with industry certifications, stackable industry certifications. Last year we had students leave with over 300 certifications in Pittsburgh Public Schools. So they were well prepared. They also left with uh, post-secondary credits. We're fortunate to have support of the Pittsburgh Promise, and our students are able to take post-secondary uh, college classes prior to leaving high school. So they're not just leaving with the industry search, but for those who want to also go on to post-secondary, they're leaving with a jump start on their career. I'll leave with saying before I call up Dr. Allen, <laughs> again, the. Uh, Career and technical education programs in Pittsburgh are preparing students to, be, um, to go into positions or jobs that are high demand, high skill, and high wage. And I also appreciate when they talked about for females, males, and those of color. It's available to all students in Pittsburgh public schools. 
our uh, career and technical education programs, the application process is open to all students. There is also not a grade point average uh, connected because what we found out is once some students get into our programs, they soar. The academics go up along with the skill level. So thank you and please check out the virtual tour on Pittsburgh uh, Public Schools website. Thank you. I'll call up Dr. Allen. Thank you, Ms. Mike. I'll be um, very brief. Um, as uh, Ms. Mike talked about the career and technical opportunities that are available in our high schools, uh, most of them begin in 10th grade, some in 9th grade. Um, Angela and I have had a partnership as it relates to what does a comprehensive approach look like in terms of preparing our students earlier. So I just want to tell you about some of our efforts that are underway about exposure, career education exposure beginning in elementary school so the students will be informed excuse me, be empowered to make more informed choices um, about what they want to pursue and that we help to equip them to be able to pursue those aspirations. Um, not just from the solid academics, which um, clearly we need, and we heard that from our panel about the kinds of high skilled jobs that um, are in our trades and, are, and in other um, industries. So we want to make sure we have a solid academic foundation for our students. But really students, it's hard for them to aspire to um, careers that they have not yet seen. And so that's where we have um, a commitment and a responsibility, and I do see it as a social justice issue, and making sure that that happens systemically within our district, not just for some of our students, but the students get baseline exposure experiences throughout uh, their career in Pittsburgh Public Schools. So um, I'll just tell you about our um, comprehensive guidance plan. Um, some of you may be aware of it, as it is um, a state requirement. Um, it's been an unfunded mandate. Um, but we are doing it not just because it is something that we're required to do, but morally it's what we should be doing, um, like I said, in terms of making sure that all of our students get a, um, a level of exposure experiences and opportunity to try out um, and um, pursue different pathways while they're in school to be able to take advantage of CTE or magnet theme or um, certain AP classes. That's what our job is to make sure that we equip them to be able to do that. So our guidance plan, we. Um, it includes various elements related to um, career lessons, um, of not just in career, but around academic, um, personal, and social, but then also around individual success planning, which is um, something that we are um, really excited about, but it takes a lot of work when you think about um, the number of students that we have for the number of counselors and social workers. Um, and so that is an ongoing effort um, in trying to build more space for um, our counseling staff to be able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations and, and groups um, with students about what some of their interests are and opportunity for them to test out those skills. And so we're very pleased that, um, that our um, new superintendent, Dr. Anthony Hamlet, um, has made an investment um, in assuring more of those um, kinds of supports in, time, in terms of uh, adding additional positions that will be able to streamline some of the uh, routine um, items that counselors and social workers often are bogged down with, that they'll be able to have more of the, um, the time with students to have the counseling conversations to help get them on the track. And we can't do without partners. We see some of um, the folks that are on our guidance advisory council. Um, Angela also convenes um, a business advisory council that includes um, uh, folks from the trades as well as from other business areas. And so our students can't explore if we don't have um, businesses and organizations that step up like those of you in the room. So I know our time is running out. Um, Angela and I will be here a little bit longer. Um, please see us if you're interested in learning more about the work or um, directly interested in providing an exposure experience. Thank you. Thank you.